The École Polytechnique massacre, also known as the Montreal Massacre, was a mass shooting at the École Polytechnique in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, that occurred on December 6, 1989. Fourteen young women were murdered and a further ten women and four men were injured by Marc Lepine. He entered a classroom at the university, where he separated the male and female students. After claiming that he was fighting feminism and calling the women a bunch of feminists. He shot all nine women in the room, killing six. He then moved through corridors, the cafeteria, and another classroom, targeting women for just under 20 minutes before turning the gun on himself. His suicide note claimed political motives and blamed feminists for ruining his life. The note included a list of 19 Quebec women whom Lepine considered to be feminists and apparently wished to kill. It is the deadliest mass shooting in Canadian history. Since the attack, Canadians have debated various interpretations of the events, their significance, and Lepine's motives. Many feminist groups and government officials characterize the massacre as an anti-feminist attack that is representative of wider societal violence against women. Consequently, the anniversary of the massacre has been commemorated as the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. Other interpretations emphasize Lepine's abuse as a child or suggest that the massacre was simply the isolated act of a madman, unrelated to larger social issues. Still other commentators have blamed violence in the media and increasing poverty, isolation, and alienation in society, particularly in immigrant communities. The incident led to more stringent gun control laws in Canada. It also introduced changes in the tactical response of police to shootings, changes which were later credited with minimizing casualties at the 2006 Dawson College shootings. <laughs> <laughs> Massacre Sometime after 4 p.m. on December 6, 1989, Mark Lepine arrived at the building housing the École Polytechnique, an engineering school affiliated with the Université de Montréal, armed with a semi-automatic rifle and a hunting knife. He had purchased a rifle on November 21, 1989, in a Checkmate sports store in Montreal, telling the clerk that he was going to use it to hunt small game. Lepine was familiar with the layout of the building since he had been in and around the École Polytechnique at least seven times in the weeks leading up to the event. Lepine sat for a time in the office of the registrar on the second floor. He was seen rummaging through a plastic bag and did not speak to anyone, even when a staff member asked if she could help him. He left the office and was subsequently seen in other parts of the building before entering a second-floor mechanical engineering class of about 60 students at about 5.10 p.m. After approaching the student giving a presentation, he asked everyone to stop everything and ordered the women and men to opposite sides of the classroom. No one moved at first, believing it to be a joke until he fired a shot into the ceiling. Lepine then separated the nine women from the approximately fifty men and ordered the men to leave. He asked the remaining women whether they knew why they were there, and when one student replied, No, he answered, I am fighting feminism. One of the students, Natalie Provost, said, Look, we are just women studying engineering, not necessarily feminists ready to march on the streets to shout we are against men, just students intent on leading a normal life." Lepine responded, "'You're women, you're going to be engineers. You're all a bunch of feminists. I hate feminists.'" He then opened fire on the students from left to right, killing six, and wounding three others, including provost. Before leaving the room, he wrote the word shit twice on a student project. Lepine continued into the second floor corridor and wounded three students before entering another room where he twice attempted to shoot a female student. When his weapon failed to fire, he entered the emergency staircase where he was seen reloading his gun. He returned to the room he had just left, but the students had locked the door. Lepine failed to unlock it with three shots fired into the door. Moving along the corridor, he shot at others, wounding one, before moving towards the financial services office where he shot and killed a woman through the window of the door she had just locked. He next went down to the first floor cafeteria, in which about a hundred people were gathered. 
The crowd scattered after he shot a woman standing near the kitchens and wounded another student. Entering an unlocked storage area at the end of the cafeteria, Lepine shot and killed two more women hiding there. He told a male and female student to come out from under a table, they complied and were not shot. Lepine then walked up an escalator to the third floor where he shot and wounded one female and two male students in the corridor. He entered another classroom and told the three students giving a presentation to get out, shooting and wounding Maurice Leckler, who was standing on the low platform at the front of the classroom. He fired on students in the front row and then killed two women who were trying to escape the room, while other students dove under their desks. Lepine moved towards some of the female students, wounding three of them and killing another. He changed the magazine in his weapon and moved to the front of the class, shooting in all directions. At this point, the wounded Leckler asked for help. Lepine unsheathed his hunting knife and stabbed her three times, killing her. He took off his cap, wrapped his coat around his rifle, exclaimed, Ah shit! and then committed suicide by shooting himself in the head, twenty minutes after having begun his attack. About sixty unfired cartridges remained in the boxes he carried with him. He had killed 14 women in total 12 engineering students, one nursing student and one employee of the university and injured 14 others, 10 women and 4 men. After briefing reporters outside, Montreal Police Director of Public Relations Pierre Leckler entered the building and found his daughter Maurice's stabbed body. The Quebec and Montreal governments declared three days of mourning. A joint funeral for nine of the women was held at Notre Dame Basilica on December 11, 1989, and was attended by Governor General Jean Sauvé, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, Quebec Premier Robert Barassa, and Montreal Mayor Jean Doré, along with thousands of other mourners. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide letter Mark Lepine's inside jacket pocket contained a suicide letter and two letters to friends, all dated the day of the massacre. Some details from the suicide letter were revealed by the police two days after the event, but the full text was not disclosed. The media brought an unsuccessful access to information case to compel the police to release the suicide letter. A year after the attacks, Lepine's three page statement was leaked to journalist and feminist Francine Pelletier. It contained a list of 19 Quebec women whom Lepine apparently wished to kill because he considered them feminists. The list included Pelletier herself, as well as a union leader, a politician, a TV personality, and six police officers who had come to Lepine's attention as they were on the same volleyball team. The letter without the list of women was subsequently published in the newspaper La Presse, where Pelletier was a columnist. Lepine wrote that he considered himself rational and that he blamed feminists for ruining his life. He outlined his reasons for the attack including his anger towards feminists for seeking social changes that "...retain the advantages of being women while trying to grab those of the men." He also mentioned Dennis Lorty, a Canadian Armed Forces corporal who killed three government employees and wounded 13 others in an armed attack on the National Assembly of Quebec on May 7, 1984. The text of the original letter in French is available, as well as an English translation. Victims <inaudible> 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 Genevieve Bergeron, born 1968, mechanical engineering student. Eline Colgan, born 1966, mechanical engineering student. Natalie Croteau, born 1966, mechanical engineering student. Barbara Dagno, born 1967, mechanical engineering student. Anne Marie Edward, born 1968, chemical engineering student. Maud Haviernik, born 1960, materials engineering student. Maurice Leganier, born 1964, budget clerk in the École Polytechnique's finance department. Maurice Leckler, born 1966, materials engineering student. Anne Marie Lemay, born 1967, mechanical engineering student. Sonia Pelletier, born 1961, mechanical engineering student. Michelle Richard, born 1968, materials engineering student. 
Annie Street Arno, born 1966, mechanical engineering student. Annie Turcotte, born 1969, materials engineering student. Barbara Klusnik Widajevich, born 1958, nursing student. In addition, suicides were later reported among students who had been present at the time of the massacre. At least two students left notes confirming that they committed suicide due to distress caused by the massacre. Topic: <inaudible> Perpetrator. The shooter, Marc Lepine, was born to a French-Canadian mother and an Algerian father and was initially named Gamal Garbi. His father, a mutual funds salesman, did not consider women to be the equal of men. He was physically and verbally abusive to his wife and son, discouraging tenderness between mother and child. When Gamal was seven, his parents separated, his father ceased contact with his children soon after. His mother returned to nursing to support the family, and because of her schedule, the children lived with other families during the week. At 14, Gamal changed his name to Mark Lepine, citing his hatred of his father as the reason for taking his mother's surname. Lepine attempted to join the Canadian Army during the winter of 1980-1981 but, according to his suicide letter, was rejected because he was anti-social. The brief biography of Mark Lepine that police released the day after the killings described him as intelligent but troubled. He disliked feminists, career women and women in traditionally male occupations, such as the police force. He began a pre-university CEGEP college program in pure sciences in 1982 but switched to a three-year vocational program in electronics technology after his first year. He abandoned this program in his final semester without explanation. Lepine applied to the École Polytechnique in 1986 and in 1989 but lacked two CEGEP courses required for admission. He completed one of them in the winter of 1989. <laughs> Search for a rationale The massacre profoundly shocked Canadians. Government and criminal justice officials feared that extensive public discussion about the massacre would cause pain to the families and lead to anti-feminist violence. As a result, a public inquiry was not held, and Mark Lepine's suicide letter was not officially released. In addition, although an extensive police investigation into Mark Lepine and the killings took place, the resulting report was not made public, though a copy was used by the coroner as a source in her investigation. The media, academics, women's organizations, and family members of the victims protested the lack of a public inquiry and paucity of information released. The gender of Mark Lepine's victims, as well as his oral statements during the massacre and suicide note, quickly led to the events being seen as an anti-feminist attack and as an example of the wider issue of violence against women. Feminist scholars consider Lepine's actions to spring from a widespread societal misogyny, including toleration of violence against women. Scholars have categorized it as a pseudo-community type of pseudo-commando. Murder suicide, in which the perpetrator targets a specific group, often in a public place, and intends to die in a blaze of glory. Criminologists regard the massacre as an example of a hate or bias crime against women, as the victims were selected solely because of their membership in the category of women, and those targeted were interchangeable with others from the same group. Lepine's mother later wondered if the attack was not directed at her, as some would have considered her a feminist since she was a single, working mother. Others, including television journalist Barbara Frum, pleaded that the massacre not be seen as an anti-feminist attack or violence against women, and questioned why people insisted on diminishing the tragedy by suggesting that it was an act against just one group. As predicted by Mark Lepine in his suicide letter, some saw the event as the isolated act of a madman. A psychiatrist interviewed Lepine's family and friends and examined his writings as part of the police investigation. 
He noted that Mark Lepine defines suicide as his primary motivation, and that he chose a specific suicide method, namely killing oneself after killing others multiple homicide, suicide strategy, which is considered a sign of a serious personality disorder. Other psychiatrists emphasized the traumatic events of his childhood, suggesting that the blows he had received may have caused brain damage, or that Lepine was psychotic, having lost touch with reality as he tried to erase the memories of a brutal, yet largely absent, father while unconsciously identifying with a violent masculinity that dominated women. A different theory was that Lepine's childhood experiences of abuse led him to feel victimized as he faced losses and rejections in his later life. His mother wondered whether Lepine might have suffered from attachment disorder, due to the abuse and sense of abandonment he had experienced in his childhood. Others expressed a broader analysis, framing Lepine's actions as the result of societal changes that had led to increased poverty, powerlessness, individual isolation, and polarization between men and women. Noting Lepine's interest in violent action films, some suggested that violence in the media and in society may have influenced his actions. Following a shooting at Dawson College on September 13, 2006, Globe and Mail columnist Jan Wong controversially suggested that Mark Lepine may have felt alienated from Quebec society as he was the child of an immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> Effects The injured and witnesses among university staff and students suffered a variety of physical, social, existential, financial, and psychological consequences, including post-traumatic stress disorder. A number of students committed suicide. In the suicide letters of at least two of them, the anguish they suffered following the massacre was cited as the reason for killing themselves. Nine years after the event, survivors reported still being affected by their experiences, though with time some of the effects had lessened. <laughs> Police response Police response to the shootings was heavily criticized for the amount of time it gave Lepine to carry out the massacre. The first police officers to arrive at the scene established a perimeter around the building and waited before entering the building. During this period, several women were killed. Subsequent changes to emergency response protocols led to praise of emergency responders' handling of the Dawson College shooting in 2006 in which one woman was killed by a shooter. In that incident, coordination amongst emergency response agencies and prompt intervention were credited with minimizing the loss of life. Gun control The massacre was a major spur for the Canadian gun control movement. Heidi Rathjen, a student who was in one of the classrooms Lepine did not enter during the shooting, organized the Coalition for Gun Control with Wendy Kukir. Suzanne Laplante Edward and Jim Edward, the parents of one of the victims, were also deeply involved. Their activities, along with others, led to the passage of Bill C-68, or the Firearms Act, in 1995, ushering in stricter gun control regulations. These new regulations included requirements on the training of gun owners, screening of firearm applicants, rules concerning gun and ammunition storage and the registration of all firearms. Between 2009 and 2012, survivors of the massacre and their families publicly opposed legislative actions by Stephen Harper's conservative government aimed at ending the requirement to register non-restricted firearms commonly referred to as the Long Gun Registry. A bill was narrowly defeated in September 2010, but following their 2011 majority election win, the Long Gun Registry was abolished by the Harper government in April 2012. The Quebec government subsequently won a temporary injunction, preventing the destruction of the province's gun registry data, and ordering the continued registration of long guns in Quebec. In March 2015 the Supreme Court of Canada ruled against Quebec, clearing the way for the destruction of all registry data. Violence against women The Canadian women's movement sees the massacre as a symbol of violence against women. 
The death of those young women would not be in vain, we promised." Canadian feminist Judy Rebick recalled, "...we would turn our mourning into organizing to put an end to male violence against women." In response to the killings, a House of Commons subcommittee on the status of women was created. It released a report, "...the war against women." in June 1991, which was not endorsed by the full standing committee. However, following its recommendations, the federal government established the Canadian Panel on Violence Against Women in August 1991. The panel issued a final report, "...changing the landscape, ending violence, achieving equality," in June 1993. The panel proposed a two-pronged, "...national action plan," consisting of an equality action plan", and a zero tolerance policy", designed to increase women's equality and reduce violence against women through government policy. Critics of the panel said that the plan failed to provide a workable timeline and strategy for implementation and that with over 400 recommendations, the final report failed to make an impact. Controversy. Topic. Failure to intervene Male survivors of the massacre have been subjected to criticism for not intervening to stop Lepine. In an interview immediately after the event, a reporter asked one of the men why they abandoned the women when it was clear that Lepine's targets were women. René Jalbert, the sergeant at arms who persuaded Dennis Lorty to surrender during his 1984 attack, said that someone should have intervened at least to distract Lepine, but acknowledged that, "...ordinary citizens cannot be expected to react heroically in the midst of terror." Right-wing newspaper columnist Mark Stain suggested that male inaction during the massacre illustrated a "...culture of passivity." prevalent among men in Canada, which enabled Lepine's shooting spree. Yet the defining image of contemporary Canadian maleness is not M. Lepini, Garby but the professors and the men in that classroom, who, ordered to leave by the lone gunman, meekly did so, and abandoned their female classmates to their fate—an act of abdication that would have been unthinkable in almost any other culture throughout human history. Male students and staff expressed feelings of remorse for not having attempted to prevent the shootings, but Natalie Provost, one of the survivors, said that she felt that nothing could have been done to prevent the tragedy, and that her fellow students should not feel guilty. <laughs> Interpretation The feminist movement is periodically criticized for appropriating the massacre as a symbol of male violence against women. For example, Charles Rakoff, a University of Toronto computer science professor, compared the Ku Klux Klan with those organizing vigils marking the event, writing that, T he point us to use the death of these people as an excuse to promote the feminist, extreme left-wing agenda, and adding that it is, no more justified than the KKK using the murder of a white person by a black person as an excuse to promote their agenda. Other critics say that Lepine was a lone gunman who does not represent men, and that violence against women is neither condoned nor encouraged officially or unofficially in Western culture. In this perspective, feminist memorializing is considered socially divisive on the basis of gender and therefore harmful by bestowing guilt on all men, irrespective of individual propensity to violence against women. Some men's rights and anti-feminist commentators state that feminism has provoked violence against women, and without condoning the shootings, view the massacre as an extreme expression of men's frustrations. A few anti-feminists view Lepine as a hero, and glorify his actions. Memorials Since 1991, the anniversary of the massacre has been designated the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women, intended as a call to action against discrimination against women. 
A white ribbon campaign was launched in 1991 by a group of men in London, Ontario, in the wake of the massacre, for the purpose of raising awareness about the prevalence of male violence against women, with the ribbon symbolising, "...the idea of men giving up their arms." Commemorative demonstrations are held across the country each year on December 6 in memory of the slain women and numerous memorials have been built. The Place du 6 d'Acombre 1989 in the Côte des Neiges, Notre-Dame de Grasse borough of Montreal was created as a memorial to the victims of the massacre. Located at the corner of Dessels Avenue and Queen Mary Road, a short distance from the university, it includes the art installation NEF pour 14 Rhinus Nave for 14 Queens by Rose Marie Goulet. It is the site of annual commemorations on December 6. A memorial erected in Vancouver sparked controversy because it was dedicated to all women murdered by men, which critics say implies all men are potential murderers. As a result, women involved in the project ironically received death threats and the Vancouver Park Board subsequently banned any future memorials that might antagonize other groups. The event has also been commemorated through references in television, theater, and popular music. A play about the shootings by Adam Kelly called The Anorak was named as one of the best plays of 2004 by the Montreal Gazette. Colleen Murphy's play, December Man, was first staged in Calgary in 2007. The movie Polytechnique, directed by Denis Villeneuve, was released in 2009 and sparked controversy over the desirability of reliving the tragedy in a commercial film. Several songs have been written about the events, including "This Memory" by the folk duo The Word Sisters and "The 6th of December 1989." By the Australian singer Judy Small. In 2013, a new science building at John Abbott College was named in honour of Anne Marie Edward, a victim of the massacre who attended the college before going on to university. For the commemorative ceremony on the 25th anniversary of the massacre in 2014, 14 searchlights representing the 14 victims of the massacre were installed on the summit of Mount Royal and turned skyward at the exact time when the attack had started 25 years earlier. Also in 2014, the Order of the White Rose was established, a $30,000 national scholarship for female engineering graduate students. The selection committee was made up of presidents, principals and deans of engineering from several prestigious Canadian universities and chaired by Michelle Thibodeau de Guire, the first female graduate of École Polytechnique. See also 2014 Isla Vista killings, a killing spree in the United States in which misogyny was cited as one of the killer's motives Toronto van attack, worst mass killing in Canada since this one, killer also alleged to be motivated by misogyny. List of massacres in Canada Port Arthur Massacre, a 1996 shooting in Australia that similarly changed opinion on gun control. Enclave, the Ottawa Women's Monument, a monument in Canada to women killed by men.